Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Absolutely crazy day at UBN Radio today. It is insane. Welcome to Shut Up. We should shut up. Everybody's canceled on us. Deborah just walked no, in. No, no, I what just walked in. Literally, still, walked. no, no, I'm still. <sighs> I can barely breathe. I'm running up the street on oh, Gower. We I'm were thinking, starting the show without you. Oh, but like you we should. wait for no one. You really think you need me? Please. I told her we <laughs> I mean, should start, and Maybe. she said, "Shut up." Did you oh, walk look, here? Look what is who, your issue? Uh, please. Do we all know that I can get distracted? <laughs> yeah. Do you know right. what time the show starts? We do it every Wednesday I'm at 1 o'clock. I'm always on time. Don't go there. I'm but, the one no. who's always late. Yeah. Let's not, not yeah, you know, she's I need the blonde, to have, She's the blonde who's late. something. Yeah, she's <laughs> the blonde who's late. So, no. So, okay, here's what I'm doing. I'm... Are we talking about thinking you? You're about, late and we're starting with you? Yes. we're think, I'm thinking about the show. Well, and what something. am I doing? I'm driving right past Gower on the 101. And I'm thinking, uh-oh. There's this street and that street, and I think I don't think I pass Vermont first. And oh I'm my thinking, God. so you don't, you don't oh, know how to get here. That's uh, the first. Please, thing. Is, is, tell me if this surprises either of you at this point after knowing me. It's a miracle. You that are kind of crazy. Yeah, a little nutty, right? Very I mean, I, nutty. I used to think I was her flakiest friend. No, oh, no, 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 absolutely but not. I wouldn't, I I wouldn't call it flaky. I would oh, just yes, call I would. it no, I would. no distracted. No, I would, I would, no you're I would flaky. Say flaky. No, you got a little flake there. I probably a little. And sorry, I'm looking up something because that's my pen. You came in late. You bring your own pen. John, get me a pen. Jesus I Christ, <laughs> woman. You're late. You're unprepared. You try it. No, no, what, you prepared. want my homework, too? No, no, no. no. Prepared, I Damn. am. Take the, take the, hey, did you see the photos that I sent to No, I haven't seen your photos. Okay. I didn't want to see your photos. Then I yet. am prepared. Okay. So, um, but we're not talking about you right now. Well, we should. But okay. anyway. I, I want to hear about well, Dorothea's okay. night. <laughs> First of all, what is your problem? Yeah, you she's so mad. Angry? Yeah, well, she's mad. Angry. I'm the I'm one who's an late. It's I'm an like, angry woman. Isn't that obvious? You're only discovering this now. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I'm looking up some pictures of some kids because we're going to talk about mending kids a little later. And I'm looking up the pictures of the kids whose lives we are currently trying to save. And they're, they're here John, somewhere. So I'll water. be saving lives oh, while you're bitching. You have your own water. Oh, my Lord. Water, pen. But I made it. I actually made it beforehand. Yeah, we're so ahead. glad you're here. I know you are. <laughs> you I don't like, know what you Did you, you like the enthusiasm <laughs> with which I... S- we're so glad you're here. <laughs> okay, so oh. nothing actually happened to you. You you just were Got late. distracted. Right. I you missed got, your exit. Phew, yeah, I was thinking about the show. That's a good thing, right? The fact that nobody's calling fa- in and we have nobody. You mean our, that part of the show, yeah, the disaster? I, I'm calling Tony, you know, the head man here. And I'm saying, Tony, mm-hmm. you do know you got those pictures super late because everybody canceled on us. So what am I to do? So I, you know, we'll pull it together. It'll be fine. Right. That's right. I'm still producing at this I moment. Know. Well, I'm look, I know. I'm waiting for some photos to come in myself. I'll wait till oh, here you see they my go. photos. They just came in. John, I'm sending you some photos now. We're going to get an update from Chef Dustin oh, Trainee. Oh, that. Because for, I want to ask for a free lunch. Very I know. Good. I want to know how it went at Chef Dance, and I want to hear what celebrities I were in the room. I still don't understand what the hell Chef Dance is, but it, we'll figure that out. It's you know, a that competition. That happens to Dorothy a lot. Like, we have people, and she goes, what's that? But she's usually right. Well, I It's just, hard to sort of figure out. I'm sure out. Chef Dance was great at Sundance, It was at Sundance. Don't you just like the name? I didn't even do Chef my Dance hair. Is kind yeah. of cute. Thank it was one of those. I do. We'll we'll review it later when he calls in. How's that? Yeah, your hair looks good. It does. Okay, it does. thank you. You well, you know how to do the headphone thing. I don't yeah. do that very well. Does she does that yeah. very well? Yeah. Dorothy is so nice today. I think she feels bad for me or something. <laughs> yeah. What's going on with you? Why are you being nice to her? Because last week when you weren't here, we so <laughs> bonded. Right. It was just we the so two of bonded. Us. We didn't oh, have yeah. you. We didn't need the brunette. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's so true. They never need the brunette. They always need the blonde, but they never need the brunette. I am a brunette. Oh, okay, John. Yeah, that goes for uh-huh. three I of us. I found this picture. I will, I will send oh, this Oh, I'm to sending you some pictures, too, John. Perfect. Oh, Notice, right. it's my picture is not hers. John, yes, I yes. was prepared. My, you w- did you see my fat pictures? I have a lot of pictures in here No, you. make sure you, oh my God. the skinny ones are good. The fat ones are <laughs> unbelievable. Okay. Thank you. All right. So you, um, you that's a little. That's a little preview. We're going to do something on weight loss. It's, I actually think we have an interesting show, you considering think so. we just we'll pulled see who it else together. So. <laughs> I I do. I really do. Now, Dorothy, you're going to start off talking about what you and Sam did. 
Uh, God, if I could ever. All right, I, you know I love. She Sam. doesn't want to talk. Do I like Sam. Wanna... You're too. All right, she's distra- You know when she's on her iPad, you cannot get Dorothy to focus, even if we're live on the air. Right, okay, yeah. so now so now start. it's her. You start. Like, okay. You jump in. All right, so um, I think we're doing great, frankly. So. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. We're off the air already. Yeah. <laughs> Any potential for sponsorship is just die, 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 die. Oh uh, no, I think they love it. So I went to see. Um, a show at the Amundsen on opening oh, night. what was it? Dame Edna's farewell tour. And I've never seen Dame Edna live. And yes, there's a picture of me. Mm-hmm. I had literally flown in from New York because mm-hmm. I was caught in the storm. I was a day late and I was determined. I said, God damn it, I'm going to this opening. I want to go see Dame Edna. I just about fell asleep, not because of Dame Edna. I was just exhausted, mm. and I loved her. She's hilarious. I and heard it was great. We were supposed to go, and oh, we really? didn't. We, I, we, gee, for, Did you we, miss your exit? We <laughs> <laughs> we forgot that that was opening night. But uh, yeah. but what was fascinating? She's going to the Grammys. Mm-hmm. Oh, you are going to the Grammys, mm-hmm. aren't you? Now we go every year. Well, but wait a minute. You told us you went to the Golden Globes last time, and you didn't. You went to after. Party. I went to so the after you, parties. So Sorry. what are you going to now? Is to, it, no, no. We're going to the show. You're going, going to the Grammys to the party. In, in the actual in auditorium, the, yeah, in fact, not, not a room off to the side. No. Well, if we do go to a room off to the side, oh it would be, God. excuse me. She's not even no, going no, no, to the no, no, Grammys. No. She's no. not I, even going to the Grammys. Right, now I, I actually think she is going to the Grammys. No, we're going to the Grammys. Yeah. The Golden in, Globes, that was a Golden little bit Globes, of a bait and switch. No, no, Glo- it was. Golden it was Globes. misleading. Always, okay, I never I got was going to That was misleading. You were very misleading. Yeah, I didn't mean that. We went to the parties at the Golden Globes. So angry. What a bitch. Oh, my God. Shut up. Oh, my God. Grammys, this will be our third year. She's usually relatively nice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, she quirky, likes me but anymore. relatively nice. Sorry, I can pull back. <laughs> no, I like it, actually. I can take it. Well, uh, no, so listen. So we are going to the Grammys. Um, you know, first year, we were like literally 10th row on the floor. I want you to know that. Oh, cool. Second year, which was last year, we were just off to the side, maybe like 12th row, but off well, to the side. Well, why do you rate? Wait a minute. And who did you piss off that your seats weren't as good? This year, we're like in the friggin' nosebleeds because we got it too, too late. It's a what miracle we're even... But we why? we have to, you know, send it into the Grammy people. They invite you. You know, John's in radio, so mm-hmm. we get to go. And we sent it in so late that we're super nosebleeds, and I'm really upset about it. Uh, so. Beyonce's performing. Um, yeah, she performed last year with her husband. She opened. That was it, it's one of the greatest shows to go to. I'll tell you though, if you can't get into the Grammys, mm-hmm. here's your ticket. Go to the American Music Awards. You can get a ticket on whatever StubHub. They are. It's a great show. It's, she and, goes to everything. No, I and know she does. Well, you went to this Madame Dom thing. I missed that. Madame Dom, Dame Edna, that Dame thing. Edna. <laughs> she's huge. No, I know. I know. I she's mean, not tall. Not tall. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. is. Yeah, she's big. I didn't know she'd had a talk show overseas and all these other things. What? Didn't she have a talk show? Hey, wait here? a minute. And we don't what, have one. What a oh. what a career. What yeah. a career. So funny to see the retrospective video that they played. It, it's actually if you can go see it, it's quite fun. It's very interactive. She's we very should interactive. Go. You know that? Do you want to go? That'd be a fun thing to do. I don't, don't jump at yes <laughs> there. Don't be like yeah, Deborah. Great. Why don't you invite her to the Emmys? You invite her to no, no, the Grammys. Oh, the right. I'd the go Grammys. to the Grammys. I didn't get invited to the Emmys. See, I don't, I don't do the cool stuff you guys do that you post. I don't get invited to those things. I just get invited to stuff like Grammys. All right. Well, if your husband doesn't want to go to the Grammys, mm. I would even mm. sit in the nosebleeds. Mm. And we had to rearrange our entire schedule on Sunday because of you and the Grammys. All right. Now, what is this thing we're doing Sunday? Oh, we are doing it at eleven, right? We are. Thank we're you. doing a special show. Our first live show on location from the what is it called john the conscious life expo thank you we don't even know where we're going john <laughs> i don't know where we're going i don't even know what it the is the lax hilton uh-huh. if, uh february 6th through the 8th so it's coming this weekend and what is it why what, can't we what, do the six what's happening it's really cool it's uh it's a wellness and spirituality uh uh symposium thing symposium yeah. god i need yeah. that so we it's do. it's like Psychics. I love psychics. psychics. I know. She okay. loves healers, psychics. Healers. I need a healer. Authors, Can we get a massage Nutritionists. On the facialists. Uh, yeah, actually. Ah, there we, will be. There will be. And yeah. there will be a facialist on our show. So, Have you ever had a gold facial? I want you to know something. I don't want to know Answer that the is. question. I don't even Yes or no. It. Yes no. or no. No, Dorothy and I have. I've many never, times. Many I want you to I've know. only had one. And look at her skin. Why does your no. skin look skin. better than Dorothy, mine? Dorothy, when she gets the gold facial, oh my God. Yeah, because I have pretty crappy skin, but I have no, a great no. facialist. But you look great. I've never had a facial in my life. I want you to, in my life. Really? I'm afraid to get them because somebody said you get all red and pimply. What the hell are you afraid of? Getting red and pimply. You're an adult. Get it's a okay. facial. Get a facial. It really? may be time. 
You're going to the Grammys. You need to look good. <laughs> I just got your text that said, uh-oh, I'm late. <laughs> okay, I wrote that as I got off some, like, Silver Lake Boulevard so or something. So you were texting and, I thought, and driving. Well, that's kind of near okay. where you... No, I was, <laughs> I was at a light. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of near where you are, like Beachwood? Well, and... I'm, I'm in... Yeah, I'm in Hollywood. Yeah, and Hollywood I thought, Hills. oh, this is where she just left from a half an hour ago. So at least I knew you were here. Yes, I was here. <laughs> and Dorothy, you were working the red carpet? Um, yeah, I did this event called uh, Movies for Grownups. And Which they invited I felt, you. I felt very grown up. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, why, why would they invite why you? Why were to do you it? there? God knows they wouldn't invite me. I, I would be like movies for preschool. It's but. an AARP <laughs> event, and I think I'm the only like entertainment chick they could find that would be old enough to do it. No, or you would are admit, not. or would admit to being old enough to do it. Mm. Right. Um, it was kind of cool. AARP, yeah, is way cooler. It's not than what I it used to be. Right. The sponsor Let's face it. was Porsche. Porsche. Did you get a car? I did not get a car. Oh. There was no, you get a car, you get, you get a car. A car. <laughs> but I did get to talk to Kevin Costner, who was getting the Lifetime Achievement Award. Was he with his daughter again? Uh, with his wife, with his hot wife, Christine. He was with the wife this mm -hmm. time. Okay, because he was with his daughter, right? Last time, like, at the Golden Globes, I think. And everybody was Oh, like, when you were almost there. When I was, right, at the parties in the back. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> so I think we have some pictures of this. Oh, we have a phone call? Yeah, but we wait do. A minute. Well, should we do the ARP thing? Who would oh, call right, well, wait, who's who, okay. who would even wait, call us? Whoever you're calling, um, hold on a second. Do you mind? Yes, do you mind holding on for a moment? Let's finish. Okay. The ARP. Okay, so um, uh, the, the best moments of the night were um, Kevin Costner's speech, and he told um, Sam Rubin and I that he was very nervous because a Lifetime Achievement Award, and you're giving it in this room with people who obviously have some um, wisdom they've acquired over mm. the years. But he gave a kick-ass speech, but right before him, do you know Renee Russo? Yes, of course. Oh, she's she's Stunning, so gorgeous. gorgeous. Sixty, still. she's sixty. No, this so is what is I mean. Kevin. Oh, is that so a, is um, is Christy that Brinkley. 60. Who is that? What was that? A picture oh, um, of? was that Renee? No. no, I don't think I had a picture with Renee. You because Renee, no, snuck that was in. Kevin and and uh, Kevin yeah. and his wife mm -hmm. Christine. Okay, so Renee got an award for uh, best supporting actress for playing a crazy television producer. Like that happens no. in that movie Nightcrawler. Oh, I didn't like that movie. I didn't like it. And but she was crazy she TV was producer? Kind of crazy. She was in a She was very movie. good. She was very good. I never I saw like her in it. So it. in her speech, she gets up there and says, I've never freaking won anything. I'm 60 years old. I've never won anything. And she points to Kevin. She's like, Kevin, I gave you a Lifetime Achievement Award like 10 minutes ago, and you're getting another one. I've never won anything. She Aww. was so cute. She was Aww. so emotional. She and Kevin both used the F word. I was like, <gasps> I was. Um, old freaking, people use that? I was freaking surprised by the 60 year old dropping said the F word. The F Word frickin'. They said frickin'. No, no, no. They actually said <laughs> you should have heard my you should have heard my mother, okay? And she was in her eighties. So, oh, so anyway. she could she could drop the F bomb too. Oh yeah, that's where I got it from. <laughs> but both of them gave really I mean, Renee is just hilarious, but but um Kevin gave a really inspiring speech saying, you know what, we're not done. Boomers? No, but we're I think not done. No, no, but that needs to be the message for everybody all the time because People do still feel the same. I remember my mom said that. I feel that way. I mean, 35. I still feel 25. I mean, it's the same. You do feel the same. And he also said, because, you know, he put up the money for this movie, for his new movie. Mm -hmm. Nine million dollars. This man pays for everything. That he said that he does. He pays for everything. He said, I can't Why believe I'm still paying for jobs. <laughs> because he hired himself in this movie. But, um... No, His daughter's just, in this I, movie too, right? Right. As a singer? I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, have you seen the movie? Because I haven't seen. No, it. I haven't seen I, it. I've seen everything okay, okay, else. I felt badly to... talking to him because I have not seen the movie because no. I'd seen everything else. Uh, but anyway, great, great award show, and um, Sam Rubin and I did the red carpet, and it was uh, really fun. Who I'm talking? We have somebody on hold. I just totally <laughs> just forgot. tell them. To wait a minute, because I did. But, but I have a question about what? that. I can't. What? What? Like, is right, that the I'm second or third? We're going to be rude again. Keep waiting. That's okay. They can wait. But he's holding. It's 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 Chef Dustin. He's holding. Okay, one second. He's good. But um. No. <laughs> because he seemed so nice last time. He was very nice. But um, how many years have they been doing this? I'm I'm interested in it. I think this is absolutely Oh, it's fantastic. been going on a while. Um, I, I think this is like the 20th year. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't okay. know that. Okay. 20th year. Wow. But never has it been star-studded with Dorothea. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Did you have a good time with Sam? Yeah. Who needs that? Kevin Costner. I was there. <laughs> Sam Rubin and I did a talk show together a million years ago before I had a baby. That's how long ago it was. Wow. Yeah. And it, it's just fun. We've all, we always... I was in a we're, we're film. Like two women. I was in a small, a small little thing in a film once, like all of us were playing an anchor person. And I remember he was doing the red carpet at the Chinese Man Theater, and I said, "Please interview me like I'm a real actress," and he did. And that Aww. was my, you know, Sam Rubin moment. Anyway. Yeah, Sammy's a good guy. Oh, mm -hmm. Please talk to the chef. All right, all so right. we've got Chef Dustin back on the phone. Last time we talked to you, Chef Dustin, you were on your way to Chef Dance, which Dorothy still doesn't understand what it is. But tell but us. But it's such a cute name. We love the name. So what did you make, and you've got to name drop, 
Who did you feed? Who was in the room? Well, well, who I fed. Yes. Um, I mean, it's crazy. The whole situation is Park City, uh, Sundance. It's insane. And have you guys seen that? I've never been. It's, it's kind of wall-to-wall celebrities now. Yeah, I mean, it's like like the Rodeo Drive, and you're just looking around, and then yeah, that's the bad thing. I was like, I have such a horrible eye for celebrities, but I could tell you every one of their movies and what year they came out. Oh. And then, but when I see them, and then I'm going like, okay, I could tell you this. Okay, the dude from Terminator. That is, that's crazy. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> who's the, so who, who did you feed? Who was the celebrity? You were feeding, what, 200? You made a meal for 200 people, right? It was uh, 300 guests. 300, wow. 100 extra yeah. just snuck in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that yeah, would have been us. They kept, bump, they kept bumping it up on me. But it was it was an amazing night because it was... I had a full crowd all the way through. I guess a lot of the chefs had a lot of guys leave early, but oh. um, I guess they liked the whole LA trend with the menu and everything that the way it was went. On our but show. I sent you a few. I sent you a few pictures. I don't mm-hmm. know if you got. We them have yet. them. Yes, we're putting yeah. them up now because mm-hmm. right, you, it, you it, tell me who what the celebrities are. Okay. Well, I, I'm. Oh, who's in that celebrity photo? I can't see it. I've got to put my glass. That's a picture of you, and I guess it's probably your crew. Is that it? Is that the one you sent well, us? Well, the, 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 the old guy in there is my dad. Where's dad? Oh, is dad on there? He's talking about another picture. Oh, another picture. Yeah, okay, we'll maybe that's it. not loaded yet. Mm-hmm. So, Dustin, for those of us um, who don't know what Chef Dance is, it's like a companion to Sundance, but it's only for exactly. chefs, and you get invited. So when Dustin was on with us, what, two weeks you ago? You explained that very well. Thank, thank you. you. You would not tell us what you were going to make. We asked you, and we asked you. So tell oh, yeah, us, I what in the know. world did you make? What do you want me to tell you? Yeah. It's a cliffhanger. Um, it was, oh, look well, how actually, cute. The first course I did was a Spanish grilled octopus with an avocado lime emulsion, uh, really kind of California uh, themed, a little bit of red quinoa salad. I wouldn't know what to do with that. And a fire roasted salsa. Mm-hmm, and it nice. really, really, really worked well together. And, and you, you took your dad with you, right? Your dad was with you. Oh, yeah, my dad, my sister, and uh, my cousin went, mom went, mom. whole family went. Okay. That's because you're Italian. This is how we do things. This is Deborah, by the way. That's just what we do. Yeah, right? I got I to gotta, I gotta do a shout out to my mom. will kill me if I don't say because I'm half Norwegian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so oh, okay. Norwegian side. My mom will go like, why don't you ever say anything about the Norwegian side? <laughs> <laughs> That's so like, un-Norwegian right. of her. <laughs> I didn't know. I don't think I've ever yeah. had octopus. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I love I have octopus. The, I have the eating oh, habits delicious. of a child. which love octopus. octopus. It could be the worst or best thing you've ever had. Well, <laughs> you know, octopus is like, you know, if it's done right, it's, it's awesome. It's real briny. It has an ocean flavor. Oh, I'm it's looking at tender. a picture of it now. I John, want... do you have this one? That's the octopus. It's a little scary. Whoa. I was once in Greece, and I saw someone literally catch an octopus, and, you know, you know what they do to it, how they kill it. They were just smashing it up against the rock. Oh. And then he brought it to the little restaurant. Oh, you, you can't kill it that way. Those things are so resilient. you got to... The, whole, the actual way to do it, you got to kind of flip the head inside out. Ooh, oh, I, my you know God. What? Did I, you have to tell us that? I turned away. Oh, mm. now I can't eat right, octopus. Well, yeah. <laughs> is there a delay on this? Can we get a drop? <laughs> oh it was pretty solid. But, uh, but that, was, that was my first course. And the second course was, a, was a, it was actually a funny story behind it because I was doing a, 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 a lobster risotto, so a California lobster okay, risotto. That I would eat. Oh, yeah, me too. We like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, and so, but the thing was, I was going to have the lobsters shipped to Park City because I need them there. <laughs> I, the whole point of it is to make to make the stock, and that's like the meat's one thing, but the actual flavor of making the stock and going through the process is the most important thing. So, um, so anyway, so like they call me literally Saturday before I have a six a.m. flight on uh, Sunday, and they go, "Hey, uh, no go on the lobsters. We got you like frozen lobster tails." Oh no! Oh. What a disaster! I go, whoa, 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 whoa! That's a huge problem. And they go, yeah, that's just availability, what we can get. I was like, no, no, this doesn't work. I need I need the head. I need the whole body. That's the whole point of this dish. And so they kind you of really go, well, I'm sorry, you got to make do. So thank God. How I they learn to do California, this stuff? So what? I'm sorry. Fishing village. You what? I live, in, I live in San Pedro, you know, the fishing community. Right. I'm going through my Instagram feed, and I see uh, one of my buddies, a fisherman, post a picture about 60 lobsters that he just caught. So I call him up. I go, hey, man. I go, what are you doing with those lobsters? He's like, I'm See? on the way to the market right now for them. I go, save me the head. <laughs> so, like, uh, it's See? A it pays I, to have friends in good places. In, in, the, in the fishing business. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's did like you us. have them FedExed or something? Yeah, how'd they get there? Oh, no. I, I went to the trash bag and went down and picked up all the heads and drove them up to Beverly Hills. And oh! They and, and they took it on the plane with me. Imagine yeah. there was like a slight they were, like, wait, 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 wait. You, you back, took back. the lobster heads on the plane with you? How? Like well, where? In a freezer. converted the uh, heads into a stock at the restaurant okay. Saturday night. 
and then Sunday morning, ice chest it all up, you know, a bunch of like, you know, about 40 gallons of stock. No, no, I was conduced down to about 20 gallons of stock and then for 300 people worth. And it was, um, it was tricky getting through the airport with it. You know, you're kind of going, well, what's in here? So you had all head. those, like, <laughs> lobster <laughs> eyes looking at you? I hope that all your guests appreciated what you went through to make the damn risotto. They had no idea. Jeez. See, I, I know. Like, and, that's a, and I'm telling the story, and people are going, like, huh? Like, what? Because, <laughs> so like, could you imagine? You don't understand how important this head were. God, I have lobster issues because when I was a little kid, my parents got. Why am I always talking about my issues? It's okay. <laughs> this, this is what we're here for. My bathroom this issue. Is our theme. Ahead, I have a bathroom issue, person, which yeah. I will not discuss with the chef, and a lobster <laughs> issue. When I was a little kid, it was very fancy for us, but my parents got live lobsters, and they were going to, you know, put them in the water and steam them, and they were in the refrigerator. And I, I opened the refrigerator and I saw them moving a little bit. And I, I don't know. I couldn't eat lobster for you about know what? 20 years. I know. We were at the beach and they caught some, you know, the Jersey Shore. Yeah. And they, my aunt just dumped them in the boiling water. Yeah. And you could hear them screaming. Yeah. And I, I thought, oh. how do you? Oh. I named so. them. They don't have vocal so. cords. That's all steam and gases and stuff. Oh, that's not actually that's the lobster. Oh, Chef so. Dustin, you. <laughs> well, he, he, he no, would know. You know they're, they're He's killed lobsters. They're notorious crawlers. Like we we've had them at the restaurant before, where you keep them all wrapped up, yeah. and then you come in in the morning and you got to find them. Oh. They crawl out of the box. No. And they, and they, and like, oh, I'm okay. You know what? Like, if they did that, they deserve to go home. And do you do? I'm like, sorry. That call Uber. Get yeah. them home. <laughs> get them a ride home. Come on. You know that that's a lot of work. Like in Annie Hall, do you go out with the drawn butter and try and find the lobster? How do you get it back? Try to bring them in. Do a call. But. Uh, Okay, oh, well, that, that was my second course. Let's get let's knock that out. And so oh, the third so course funny. was um, a braised uh, California lamb shake. You know, so it was like slow braised, awesome, tender, consistent. You know, you could do it for 300 people. And um, I did it with actually uh, our navy bean soup that we do at the uh, restaurant Pedro, which is a 1925 recipe. You know, oh. so it's one of my great grandfather's recipe. So it was kind of like a throwback, you know, a, a braised lamb shake over the navy bean. And I did a shishito pepper jardinier, which is uh, pickled peppers. Thank you, because I was going to say, what the wow. heck is that? This is unbelievable. They really got so something. So we're running out different. of time because our other callers coming in. So Dustin, tell me, what did you mm-hmm. do for dessert? Dessert. Dessert. Oh, it did was, you bring uh, that pastry mousse. chef with you that I love from the restaurant? No, the pastry chef's at home being mama. Okay. So, so she's uh, yeah, she's being the family woman. But um. But no, like so, I did a chocolate mousse with a uh, flambe, like a torched banana, Ooh, uh, pretzel okay. sticks, and peanut butter powder. Ah, pretzel okay, sticks. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, I, love I that. have to know when okay. we come to the restaurant, which is Doma in Beverly Hills. Doma in Beverly yeah. Hills, and the three of us will come. What will we get? Will we get some lobster or no? Like I have to know. I don't want the head. Oh, we could, we could do way better than lobster for you guys. Oh. Like we're gonna, you will, for one, you gotta try the agnolotti. <laughs> oh, he's you had a doll. Agnolotti before they're the ones like pop with truffle flavor and like. Oh. They're unbelievable. Oh. Hey, I, I know we have to oh. go, but what's we going did. on with the reality show? Can we just get a quick update oh, on that? Oh, you know what, Dustin? When I was on the plane yeah. last week flying home from New York, I watched your show on the plane. See? I saw did you. you. Oh. I did, and I was Look taking pictures. Excited. I forgot to send them in. I'm like, oh, my God. That's 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 Dustin. That's he was, my friend. He was on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Well, so, I mean, the show, the show went great for us. I mean, well... Not really. We got we got unfortunately eliminated in the first round, <laughs> but we we did we did get the people's vote. We got seventy two percent of the people's vote. So that's that's what counts, right? Yeah. Well, we're glad you made it. Yay. You were one of the top sixteen restaurants in the country to be featured on a reality show on Bravo. That's a big deal. Big so, deal. Big deal. And Chef Dance, we love you. We love your restaurant. So glad it went well. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. We'll yeah. see you soon. Oh, absolutely. Thanks. We'll see you guys for dinner soon. Okay. Yeah, I can't Bye. wait. Bye, honey. Bye. So, and now we're talking about dieting. Is that the deal? Yeah. How because, crazy. Okay. okay. We're talking about dieting, and boy, this really did flow nicely. I have to say because. For no planning. For right. considering for a disaster. That, <laughs> for a dis- <laughs> I mean, but doesn't it just make sense that she I would think to me, this is going to be a disaster. No, I did. I was told whatever. Her. Okay, wait a minute. With the three of us, how would anyone notice? We're whatever. already a disaster. Okay. Exactly. So True. you just oh, add shut more. up. Okay. okay. So anyway, we're going to weight loss, and I offered up myself. Right mm-hmm. now, who the heck would do this? Let's start with. Oh, I need to see these pictures. No, no, I you, know you Okay, had. let me be very clear. I used to be super thin, like so thin that, you know, bones poking out of everywhere. And then what was it, having kids or? My third threw me over the edge 
and I had to be on bed rest for a while. I was so enormous. Let me see. Put up a couple of. I was at least over a hundred pounds from where I was when we got married. How about that? I was so huge. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was at a time where I wasn't really working because having three little kids under five, I thought, forget it. I can't do it. Yeah. I used to take Justin to, to work with me. He'd have this little like CNN little costume on. Oh, and, how cute is that? Yeah, and even oh, okay. Jordan. How did you take a baby okay. to a disaster? Is that so not this enormous? Is, is this after freaking, you had the third This is baby. after James. Okay. Anyway, and then show the other one. I look like Mama Cass. I would not have thought that was you. Thank you. Let me see the other one. This one? Okay, that's, yeah. Okay, So you that's see? when you were... Wait, wait, wait. Do you see that one? Yeah. John looked at that and he goes, wow, Deborah, look at you. You were really big when you were pregnant with James. And I said... And you weren't? I said, there's James in the little white outfit oh, yeah, next yeah. to me. I said, James was already born. <laughs> I was so big. I mean, that's big. And then show the other one. I was so enormous. So and how then, much more well, than you weigh now? Um... I was uh, probably at least 60 pounds, and people always, so I did everything. I tried to go to Weight Watchers, I did. I had food delivered, but you know, you have to be very disciplined, and we all know my personality. It's not all that disciplined in that way. If I want something, I want it, and it was just very difficult, and the more I dieted, no, that other one is a thin picture. The, the, you only have two. <laughs> I was going to say, I, only have, I didn't think I. I yeah, yeah, you only have two fat pictures. Now, can you throw the one with the bathing suit up, please? Yes. Bathing suit. What there the, you go. Oh, my God. Where That's is that? Me, Costa Rica this when past is that? year. And keep going. Way to Thank piss you. a girl off. What is that? There I am, Costa Rica picture. on the beach. That's you? It's freaking me. Yeah, Look at the hair. Like Look at the legs. I know That's Dorothy me. and I are like squinting and trying to move in. Because here. under the under the fat was a good bot. There's me again. Thank you. Keep wow. going. <laughs> How come there are more? Yeah, there's more. Okay. You promised us fat pictures. These oh, are there's another thin one with the family. Skinny bikini pictures. John, only... can't you make us feel better and go back to the fat pictures? <laughs> no, okay, keep going. There's one that I really like. I don't know what happened to it. John just <laughs> threw these on there when we had like this one. Oh, that one. Okay. Um. How many pictures do we have of you now? I was out actually at a friend's. Um, Are we still talking about you? We've got there. someone on the phone. No, <laughs> because she's no, not yet. I told her to wait till one thirty. Because I'll tell you what happened. This is very important to me that women know this. I okay. really mean it. Okay, because it's not easy. At two hundred and forty pounds, you think I felt good about myself? No, and that's not an easy place to be because, especially if you wear, you were where we were, you know, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're this enormous thing. And you go to a Weight Watchers and people are like, I was managing to figure out my points and I could eat a little, how many little tomatoes can I have for the day? And I'm thinking, friggin' tomatoes. I don't want tomatoes. So by noon, I was, in other words, nothing worked. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Until I just started to eat a little more protein. And what I did every day was I just walked. So I did it the old fashioned way. I went walking. I hike. That's why I like beg to hike with people. Because if I don't, it'll just come back. And, and are you afraid? That it'll come back? Yeah. I eat a lot. Yeah, I okay. like to eat. I am Italian. I mean that when I say I eat a lot. I really like to eat. I don't have one piece of chicken. I'll have like eight. It's the truth. I'll well, really... but if you're doing a lot of protein, because I've always had sort of like um, a tummy, like, you know, I look like I still could be expecting a child. Mm. Um, but I know if I ate more protein. It would just sort of go and away. maybe stop drinking wine. <laughs> it would at least get better. Yeah, and for me, if I have any cakes, but they're always around the house. My boys like brownies, and we made scones last night, and you know there were at least 15 scones. Well, today there's like four left. Who do you think I did? I ate most of them. So you really have to be very careful on what you're doing. It's, it's an addiction like nothing else. So are you keeping someone else waiting on the phone? I don't know if she's on. Did she yes. call? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, but okay. so who is it? Who's on the phone? Um, could yes. you introduce yourself? <laughs> Juliana, can you hear me? Hey, yes, we do. thank you. And I, I, I only met her recently, but she's so interesting. And we had such a great talk about weight loss and being fit. She's also a trainer that I thought, oh, my gosh, you'd be perfect to come on the show. Because she actually thought when we met that I was in good shape. And she has no idea from where I came from. Mm -hmm. So, But um, Juliana, you specialize just in, in vegan dishes, right? No, okay. I'm a, I'm a registered dietitian yeah. and a personal trainer, and I've been in the fitness and health industry for 20 years. And I help people lose weight from all sorts of, you know, different wherever they're at. And I help people get healthy, and I help people that have certain illnesses get healthier, and people with food allergies. And so I work with all sorts of different people. I work with children, seniors, a lot of athletes. And um, so I see a lot of different types of clients. So I've had friends recently tell me that they've never met anyone with such bad eating habits. As you? As you. Oh. Oh. Yeah, well, then you and I should go to lunch because... <laughs> well, no, but, but you eat a lot of food, but you eat good food. I I like a lot of crap. I like... You eat big steaks, oh, massive steaks. I don't know, but I steaks like, are okay. I like candy from 7-Eleven, and I like wine. So I don't know, where where do I begin? How do I begin to get rid of the sweet tooth? 
More protein. You know what? Let me, that's actually become, in the last few years, has become one of my specialties, is getting people off of sugar addiction, because it's very common, and it's very pervasive, and what happens is, you know, once you're on this cycle, it's a vicious cycle, and you can't break it. So yeah. the more you have it, the more you want it. So I've come up with a system. This, I mean, I didn't develop it, but I've, I've really honed the system of getting people to break that addiction, that cycle of wanting more and more sugar. And it's, it basically, you have to decide you want it. So I, oh, I work with people when they're ready. Like, they have to come to me and say, I can't do this anymore. It's like, you know, because it can I think ruin I'm someone's ready. life. Protein. Yeah, I think I'm ready. Don't you tell people protein. Hey, 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 I'm asking her. No, I want to know. Does she tell them that? <laughs> Ladies. No, no, I do not. I do not say protein because protein, okay. again, it's not a food group. I just posted about this today. It's not a food group. It's a macronutrient. And you don't want to have more of a <laughs> yeah. macronutrient. You want to have healthy <laughs> foods. You want to eat a lot, a lot of, a wide variety of very health-promoting foods. But the key to breaking a sugar addiction is committing and saying, It really takes about three weeks. You can completely transform your taste buds. Literally, you develop new taste buds in three weeks. So that's why the whole making a new habit, all that stuff is usually based around that timeline as an approximate timeline. And what you do is you commit to these three weeks. It's not easy at first. It gets much easier as you go on. But what you do is you cut out all refined sugars. And you can go around this by making these desserts out of, you know, date paste, date syrup. You make these very decadent desserts, but not with any kind of refined sugar. So I recommend date paste, date um, date, uh, syrup, or fruit purees. And you could bake these unbelievable But that's sugar, though. But that's still, that's sweet. Dates are very sweet. And and the fruits you're talking about, it's not like you're eliminating sugar then, because that's sugar. It's not the refined sugar. But it's sugar. No, but that's not. That's not sugar. There's a big difference between fruit and between sugar. That is a fruit. It's intact with fiber, minerals, antioxidants, vitamins, and other phytochemicals in there. And it's considered a whole food. And when you consume it, your body recognizes it as a food. Refined sugar is anything where you take the actual sugar molecules out. You process it out of the fruit or out of the cane or wherever you're getting your source from. And you refine it and take out all of the nutrients and you're left with pure, you know, sucrose. So that's the stuff that's stimulating. That's the stuff that's addictive. If you cut that out and you replace it, you eat a really healthy diet. You just, you make sure you're eating, you, you, you give yourself all sorts of different types of loving things that week because you're going to be craving the really highly refined stuff. And also you cut out the artificial sweeteners because the artificial sweeteners, any of them, stevia, sucralose, any of those are designed in the lab to be hundreds to thousands of times sweeter than table sugar. And so it basically accentuates your need for sweetness. Like it makes, it heightens your, your threshold for sweetness. So if you cut those out, you do this for literally, the first week is the hardest. So that's when I recommend doing all sorts of other things for yourself, you know, get, get a massage or, you know, like do nice other stuff that are not food related. <laughs> and after a week, it starts to get easy. And I've watched hundreds of people be completely done with their sugar addiction, myself included. I can't even look at that stuff anymore. It has no interest to me whatsoever. Well, remember when we were together, you know, our friend was serving chips and, you know, Know, really nice guacamole dip and it's true you just have a little bit you can't you can't stop and they were like the really good kind of tortilla things it's anything like that is so addictive whether it's sugar or salty or carbo mm-hmm. don't you think at least for me i don't know how about you well what yeah I'm that's try- why i recommend whole foods that's why i recommend staying away from those processed foods because they're designed to be addictive yeah. you can't help mm-hmm. it your body it's biochemical it's behavioral but it's based on a biochemical response. It releases serotonin. It feels good. You know, the more you have, the more you want it, the more you crave it. If you cut it and stop the cycle, all of a sudden you start craving really healthy things. And honestly, I would rather, there have been so many opportunities where someone's put down a dessert in front of me, even if it's a healthier dessert, and I would rather have more kale. And I used to be the biggest sugar addict ever. Okay, kale for dessert. I um, like you kale. You lost me there. I, I like kale. I, I munch on kale chips. I like that. Oh. Um, yeah, you can get them at uh, Trader Joe's. But what I don't understand, you're saying that if I, because I've switched to Truvia, so you're saying that's not a good thing, using Truvia. Right, because because it's so sweet. It's so, it's so unnaturally sweet. It's at a level literally hundreds to thousands of times sweeter than table sugar. They could measure this. It's, it's a uh, objective. Um, so should criteria. I just have sugar if I wanted it? Like if I think my cappuccino is too bitter, sh- should I then just go with the real sugar? What should I do if I don't want? No, to, no, no. So what I recommend is just cutting it out and it's going to taste bitter for a little while. Like it take, but then every day it's going to get sweeter. Every day will, you'll start to recognize the, the natural sweetness. Like literally uh, apples and sweet potatoes <laughs> become like candy because you're basically taking away that, that, that thing on your 
that your tongue, like that craving for that sweetness, and you're stripping it away, and you're going back to your roots, and all of a sudden, like the real natural sugars taste the way they're supposed to. If you think about a baby drinking breast milk, breast milk is designed, it's very sweet to the baby, but if you've ever accidentally tasted breast milk, okay. it's disgusting. But we've warped our taste buds so over bad. the years of feeding us all of these refined processed foods. So wait a minute, why is it that the French are so skinny? You know, they smoke, they eat, they, they drink. Smoke. Who? The French, Who? the French, the French are so skinny. They eat everything. There's Everything's sugar. Got a they sauce. have they have pastries and sauces. Or why is it that that the French or the Mediterranean eat all of those things and have sweets, yet they're skinnier than we are? Okay, well that's kind of an over. Um, it's not really exactly accurate if you look at the whole population. But I In know Paris, I know where you're coming from, skinny. and that if you look at the way that traditional idea and what that whole like the book and the concept of the French paradox is all about is that these people really do practice different things such as portion control, like extreme portion control. They eat very small amounts. They eat very slowly in a very nice social environment. They sit down and enjoy their meals. Smoking helps, you know, reduce appetite. They exercise and walk a lot. I I just wrote a book called The Vegetarian Diet that just published last month all about the Mediterranean diet and why it's so effective and so successful. And the biggest component to it is the, the behavioral component, the social component, how they eat, not necessarily what they eat. But ultimately, in the long run, you're healthier when you're eating healthful foods and they don't they don't eat in between meals either right they have right meals. they really do portion control they've mastered portion control if you could if you could eat anything you want it's because you're eating very little and by the way that's very healthy to eat very little so that in and of itself is a healthy behavior to do but if you're eating stuff that's very stimulating and addictive like these sugary foods it's impossible to portion control it's very difficult to portion control unless you have extremely you know, powerful, so. what's the word? Um, I mean, Willpower. You know, motivation. And you're, yeah. Well, I'm going yeah. to try and give up sugar, but um, so that's Hard. wine too, huh? Ooh. Well, uh, wine alcohol is a different, it's actually a different category, but I mean, because unless you're drinking tons and tons of wine, it doesn't act like sugar the same way. <laughs> it's metabolized different, it's a different nutrient. So if you're talking about sugar and addic- like focusing on sugar addiction, that includes all of like the refined sugars, white sugar, brown sugar, mm-hmm. confectioned sugar, um, you know, turbinado sugar, anything that masquerades as a, any kind of sugar, no matter what. That, that's what I'm talking about, the refined processed sugars. Okay. You know what I don't think I could give up, though? I don't know about the wine. And the also, Twizzlers. You love Twizzlers. No, I, but I probably could give that up. I think I could give up candy because I got much plane. better. Not on a plane. You can well, never no, give up Twizzlers on a plane. it's a long flight, yeah. I have to have Twizzlers. But you know that, oh, it, it's it's probably the grossest thing that I do. That French vanilla stuff you put in your coffee in the morning. Oh, I will not give that up. I don't care. Oh, that I'd rather go back horrible. to... that horrible. I can't stand that I'm coming to your place stuff. for coffee and a hike. Oh, my is God. Is that the worst? That stuff is terrible. It's, you know what, just a little bit. My girlfriend's flipped well, no, out on me. No, I don't me. think so. You can't, right? I mean, I need to give that up. Nope. Well, but that's the thing. If you really want to give it up, you can give up all of this. You won't crave anything. It's like, quote, it's such a liberating thing to not want that stuff. Like, you can get yeah. off of it and not even crave any of that anymore. Like, that would be too rich. Like, I put soy milk in my coffee, like that, and it's really, it's become Soy's very good. sweet and very rich for me. You know, it just depends. It just depends on when you're ready to kind of. You go all the way, and then it's it's completely out of your system. You oh, literally change your taste buds. You change your your neurological response to that stuff, and you don't want it anymore. It's she's, true. It's I've seen it so many times. She's in such great. You're in such amazing shape. We were just with them the other night, and she looks incredible. I mean, you you are a testament to what you're saying. But um, oh, what if you. you fall off the wagon? Because most people do. Let's face it. You're going to end up with that little creamer in your coffee after a month or two or three, because you just have had, have to have it. So sometimes you can have a little bit, just a little bit of something. Thing. Like, I have to have that. I can't give that Well, I up. think what you're saying is if you no longer crave it, then maybe you can have a bit of it now and then. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, and once you're not addicted to it, it's very easy to just have a little bit and not want it like that. It's, just, it's that whole cycle of wanting more and having more and continuously doing that. And it gets out of control. And so once you, like, that's why three weeks is a good threshold. And then I would, I like to see my clients kind of stay off of it for a little bit longer just to really, like, set it, set it in. And then you'll notice that certain things taste sweeter, like that you never expect it to taste sweet. And then your whole way of, of experiencing food completely transforms. It's, it's amazing. I've seen, I've witnessed this so many times. I love it because people feel like they're a slave to junk food and they're not healthy because of it and stuff happens and they, you know, it's, so it's really liberating to watch people come off of this. Can you eat more of one foods in your opinion? Like 
I know everybody's different. For me, eating more proteins worked for me. Like, are there some people where you can do more of something? That's not a food group. Just yeah. Did you miss that, that? non food group thing? <laughs> but you know, like chicken. I like chicken. So that's protein. Yeah, which is a non food group, I guess. <laughs> but whatever. It's poultry. I think. It would... <laughs> <laughs> what do you suggest it's for people who like to eat a lot? There you go. For people who just love to. Constantly people who are eat. hungry. Yeah, or not hungry. They just have to keep going. What would you say? Wait, to I'm sorry. People who are on... you were cutting out because my phone's ringing. I'm so sorry. You said people. What do I recommend for people who what? Want to either eat a lot and, you know, just sort of like to eat, you know, but need to still keep their weight down. Like for. Oh, my God. Well, I love to eat. I mean, I, that's why my whole career is based around food. I love to eat, too. So I can tell you personally and I can tell you what I've seen with my clients. When you eat foods that are lower on the calorie density scale, so you're eating foods that are really like, you know, lower calorie, high nutrition, you're going to eat, you could eat so much more. And that's, it's a whole concept. It's actually, there's a book called Volumetrics by Barbara Roll. And this, this concept has been proven and proven that the, you know, if you eat a lot of high fiber, low calorie foods, you're going to fill up faster and you could eat more volume. So it's basically you get more nutritional bang for your caloric buck and you get to chew more and eat so more. So for example, what, what are those foods? Give us some. Okay. Well, of course, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, which peas, beans, and lentils. And uh, those are the most fiber rich and the lowest calorie foods that we have. So if, and every organization, every leading health organization, the American Cancer Institute, you know, the USDA, everyone recommends half your plate is fruits and vegetables anyway. So nobody can argue with that, that we need to eat more fruits and vegetables. But um, those are the most, you know, very low calorie. But you could do all sorts of crazy, fun, delicious things with fruits and vegetables. That doesn't have to be boring but, and but plain. But you're not a meat person, too. So that's why you say that as well, right? Because for people who like meat, like poultry or whatever, um, what do you say about that? Because you don't really... Well, there's a, reason I, there's a reason I don't recommend meat and I don't eat it. I used to eat... I, okay, I was the, the typical personal trainer. I was like, you know, protein and veggies, protein and veggies. And I used to eat 18 egg whites a day. And I used to eat chicken breast, egg whites, and vegetables. 18? That was my entire diet. Oh, my God. And, um, and I was miserable. I had acne. I had stomach problems. I mean, always had stomach problems. I had allergies all the time. I was sluggish. My workouts were mediocre. Oh. And I was a trainer working out all the time. When I got off of it, everything changed for me. My, my entire health completely transformed when I got off of all animal products. But when I see people that are in health, and I do, I see people that are very, very, very sick with lots of different issues, like advanced heart disease, cancer, diabetes, a lot of type 2 diabetes, overweight, obesity, all that stuff. The number one best thing they can do and the most effective thing they can do is switch to a whole food plant-based diet, eat more plants, eat more fiber, phytochemicals, antioxidants. The only place you get these things are from plant foods. So I recommend crowding out the animal products with a lot of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and legumes, a little bit of nuts and seeds. And then if you still have to have a little bit of that, you know, you're just kind of crowding it out. And the other thing is now they have these wonderful transition products like these faux meats, these faux chicken, faux shrimp, faux whatever you, you crave, you could have it in a healthier version because it's a plant, it's, a, it's sourced from plants. And they are getting better. Those choices have really increased in the supermarket, all supermarkets, not just Whole Foods, which You're can right be very that. expensive. Um, and uh, they have gotten they're a lot not more better. Expensive. They're not more expensive than meat. No, no, no. I'm saying Whole Foods is expensive. Uh-oh. Yeah. You know, because now other supermarkets, which used to have very few items in the, you know, uh, vegan, vegetarian display case now have really increased. You can go to Costco and get that. Yes, exactly. Right? Can't Things you? have changed. Juliana, you can, you can go to, over to Costco Absolutely. and get all, yeah. it's, Absolutely. And Trader wanna... Joe's. I mean, the, oh, these Trader products Joe's are growing like yeah. crazy on the market because there's such a that people are recognizing the health benefits. I mean, the research is amazing what's coming out in the, the scientific literature about how effective like a plant-based diet is the only diet ever shown to reverse disease like reverse people with advanced coronary artery disease and reverse people with type 2 diabetes get up them off their medications it's just it's extraordinary so on to that they're recognizing that and so there a lot of people are eating more of these products so the market is talking there's all these wonderful new products and companies that are popping up like beyond meat and gardein and all these companies that are like and beyond there's that 
Hampton Creek with the Mayo and the Beyond Egg. There's all these companies that where do you, where do you are coming those? up because the consumer demand is so high. Wow. Where do you get some of these? I've never seen some of these products. Seriously, if we're interested in even picking some of that up, are you saying like Trader yeah, Joe's? Or? Well, they're, they're growing everywhere. I mean, especially here, we're in Los Angeles. We've got some, there's so many, like, the restaurants are popping up, the menu options, like there's vegan menu options everywhere now. But um, if you want to make it yourself, yes, Whole Foods. But honestly, I've price compared Whole Foods to like a Ralph's or Albertsons many, many times, like the same item. And it's always less expensive or the same at Whole Foods as it is at the traditional markets. So I, I have that argument all the time, and I don't work for Whole Foods or anything, but I'm just saying that I end up getting a lot of stuff there. But they do have it. At, they do have a lot of that stuff at Trader Joe's, which is obviously the lower priced. And um, Costco is starting to sell more and more of that stuff, so buying it in bulk. There, there, it is really it's increasing, and you can buy this stuff even online. There's a lot of options to find it online as well. Okay, right. you're adorable, and you Thank have so you. much energy Isn't for God's she, sake. I love her. I I, I, she's not even on sugar. You make me want to eat a plant. <laughs> you are so Thank cute. You. Okay, we, we like have to go hiking or something, okay? She's busy. She's got oh, um, little kids definitely. and everything. She's a busy girl. So thank you so much for being on. And this is also very last minute. So she was a real, real trooper. So thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks for having me. You guys are awesome. Bye. Okay, bye, hon. <laughs> oh, my God. She's so cute. I know. And I'm a little exhausted. I am. She's full of beans. I oh. feel. <laughs> <laughs> Always Anna to come up with a clever line. Full of beans. <laughs> uh, so it's time to talk about a charity. And um, my friend Christine is trying to call in. I will get her on the line. Oh, God, you're this so This has good. been one of these we days where John. everyone's trying to call in. We're talking over them, whatever. But... Um, and we're so grateful that everyone's called in today. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> to called save in. the day. <laughs> if not, we could have John call in over I'm here. I'm going to try and give up sugar. But I think I am going to probably... Hard wean myself off um the creamer the creamer yeah i and can, she said i can do a little wine i want you to know i cannot give that up what i have trouble with everybody has their thing oh, donuts I can, li- I can live without donuts i like yeah, donuts i like okay. candy but i make like i make i like like 7-eleven candy like hot tamales okay, i go there and they have corn the, and mm, they have a little six yeah, pack of donuts core. really I like that too, but see, what's your thing? Look at her; well, she's saying nothing. I, no, I love bacon cheeseburgers. That's my favorite food. I love Entenmann's chocolate covered donuts. Me too. Um, what else do I? Oh, and Lay's potato chips. Eh, I can the original. That. Yeah, but eat your kale chips and you'll be fine. Well, then uh, I returned I mean, kale I, I, chips. I'm, I'm never going to have a plant based diet, but I think I can okay. try and give up the sugar. I like the whole food, and I don't mean whole foods, but you know, like whole foods that grow out of God's garden, literally. Like if it comes. Yes, yeah, I don't need any of that. I don't need anything that hasn't been to a factory first. Yeah, <laughs> like Lay's potato chips or something. <laughs> no, but you know, just some broccoli. But if these are not the things I eat every day. Those are my like it's it's my last meal. And what do I cherish and what do I love? I love those items. I mean, I, I just, I love a good bacon cheeseburger. I'm an in and out cheese, I'm an in and out burger addict. I will go through there. Oh, I do like those. I will, and Wendy's, it's a miracle I lost all that weight in the first place. What, we're getting you. voicemail? We are, <laughs> our show, we're being told to shut up? No, what no, is no, that no, about? No, 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 no because no. we are so Chris, phenomenal, Christina that's what it is. Christina said she's calling. Okay. Is she calling? Uh, she might be calling another number because it's not coming up on here. Really? That's okay. Let's keep talking. Yeah. You start talking about it in the meantime. Well, she can't talk and dial at the same time. Did I give her the wrong number? Uh, oh, my God. Okay. Three, you two, say three, I'm flaky. 2, eight, four, seven, eight, two, six. I think I gave her the right number. In the meantime, number. can we talk about that? Flaky, isn't it? Like, but when I call her back, know. I'm getting a voicemail. So I don't know if she's calling uh, at the same time I'm calling or what. This is a show about process. <laughs> oh, this wait. is a process <laughs> show. She said I'm in. What yeah, does that mean? Oh, she's in. She must be on the other line. Maybe Tony's talking to her. Can you tell Tony to stop talking to our guests? Yes, I will. I mean, Poor what Tony. is he lonely Tony out Tony, there? Wait, Tony's about to quit. Okay, and he runs the <laughs> but place. But he owns the place. <laughs> That's what I mean. With it. us here, he's about to quit. Eventually, we will talk to right, Christina from Mending Kids. And Anna and I started this. Started what? The podcast. Oh, we did. We did. We to did. talk about Mending Kids. That's how Kids. we ended yeah. up here yeah, at UBN. Mean? Yeah, it's a charity that I've been involved with for about a decade. And Christina, Christina, got her right here. Hi, you. Yay. Yay. Hi, Christina. She's right. Hi. How are you guys? She Hi, made you. it. So Christina is in charge of um, social services, the director. I of know social Christina, services. and I used to talk. Do I to, know her? I don't think you do, but I used to talk to Christina a hundred times a day because when I was hosting a little girl, and she's not a little girl, she's thirteen now. My God, she's like a young woman. But when I was hosting Sandra here, my Spanish is you know, eh, and Sandra's English was non-existent. So Christina, you basically walked us through every moment of life when Sandra was staying with me when she was recovering from surgery. So I thank you, and um, can you just tell people a little bit about many? kids because it's been a while since we've talked about it yes hi everyone um hi. yeah mending kids we provide we're a nonprofit. and we provide um life-changing surgeries to children around the world. 
So we do medical missions, and we also bring kids to the United States, and we also have our international program, which is basically the kids that um, might have access to medical care, but with, they don't have the funding, so they can apply to mending kids. The kids will fund their surgery in their country, or we will find a neighboring country when they can have their surgery. I know. I always feel it's almost sort of like Match.com, but for kids who need surgery. Oh, but what types of surgery, sur- Dorothy? Any kind. Any, really any kind. anything. Anything. So we're talking everything from it nasal could be heart, surgery to heart. It could be heart, heart surgery. It could be plastic and, and surgery. I, I think we're trying to raise money right now for a Valentine's campaign, and I think it's, it's uh, heart surgery, isn't it? Yes, it is heart surgery. We do all types of surgeries except um, transplant or cancer. Unfortunately, we don't deal with cancer or transplant, but right now we're trying to fundraise for three wonderful kids that they need to have heart surgery. And one of them is precious. She's two years old and she's from Nigeria. And we want to send her to India to have um, open heart surgery. And we have a five-year-old boy from Ethiopia. His name is Dawit, and he will be going to Israel. And then we have Sharik from Ecuador that she also needs open heart surgery. And we're still trying to find her a location for her because her, um, her heart case is very complicated. So we're trying to see which of our partners will um, accept her in the program. So we're currently fundraising for those three kids. Do you ever say, you know, this particular case needs, let's say, $10,000 and go after a large donor like that and say, can you take this case on? Or is it that you fundraise and just whatever you can get a little money here, a little money there? I mean, every once in a while, like um, our our buddy Gene Simmons from KISS fell in love with them. One one of our yeah. kids from Kenya and just said, "Okay, I'm paying for it," which was right. which was That's very what I meant. nice. Yeah, especially living here, no, you it, know, it does happen. Yeah, you know, we do it different ways. Sometimes we have a wonderful person that say, "You know what? I'll fundraise. I will uh, pay for that full surgery for this child." So they we just have one person that pays for the surgery, and sometimes we have people that donate like twenty dollars every month or a hundred dollars every month. So we just, you know, we can get different types of uh, donations. I know people think that because of um, what we do, I mean, it's complicated surgery and it's expensive. They always think, well, I mean, I, I can't just give 10 bucks. Yeah, you can. Yeah. And if you keep yeah, giving 10 bucks, you- you'll eventually pay for surgery. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, because if you have a lot of people giving $10, so it adds up. So right now in our website, we actually have some Valentine's cards that we are selling for um, for fundraise, and they're really cute. They were done by some of our kids and some of our young volunteers. Um, so if anybody's interested in buying and donating to Mending Kids, you can always go to um, our website, which is www.mendingkids.org. And they're really cute, and you also see photos of the three kids that we're fundraising for. Oh, I that's a that. great you know, idea. If I you love have that. little kids, you need a Valentine's, right? Because as I recall, you have to do one for every child in the class, so you need yes. cards, right? You yeah, do. you do, you do. It's nice to know there are yeah, still Valentine's really cards. You know what? For a good cause. That, that brought up something. You know, it'd be nice for those people who have kids to say, you know, here's a gift to you. I'm donating, you know, $25 in your name, you know, Johnny, for this yeah, child to save, to, get, a kid. To, to save a kid. And I think it, I think it's a really neat gift to give somebody. I really do. Uh, especially a kid, you know. Um, and also, if you happen to be out in Malibu this weekend, the Malibu Guild is fundraising in... Um, uh, just in our neighborhood, many of the stores and restaurants in Malibu have decided to give a portion of their funds that they make uh, this Sunday. Uh, just so Sunday? Sunday? Yeah, to so Mending Sunday, kids. go shopping. So, yeah, if you're in Malibu and, and um, you want to you wanna, uh, come out to Malibu and spend some money, some of it will go to Mending Kids. And That's we're nice. raising money for a little girl named, uh, you know Wendy very well, Christina, Wendy from China. Yes. She's a, a beautiful little girl. She's an orphan. Her surgery is a little more complicated than we thought it was going to be. So since she is living with a family in Malibu while she's recovering from one surgery and waiting for another, we're fundraising. So um, is this come a, out to Malibu and shop. Is that a Dr. Frick thing? Yes, it is. Dr. Uh, Frickman. You know Dr. Frickman. Dr. Frickman. Frickman. Yes, wonderful. Dr. Frickman. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, thank you for being Thanks, on. Thanks, Christina. This was fantastic. Thanks Christina, for calling. I adore you. And I'm working on my Spanish. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Can you I say know, something? You know that's my favorite charity. I know. I have to say something about you. Every time we talk about mending kids. Oh, I get all, I can't No, even speak. your face, it's like the sun is shining oh, on it. Oh, I get you, all emotional. It is so in your heart. It's, it's great to see. So please donate. That's yeah, great. It's Thank a great you. charity. Hey, save a kid's life. What the hell? Why, Why not? not? <laughs> Why not? What's Why not? keeping you from doing that? <laughs> it's easy. It's easy to help. That's what I always say. It's easy to do the right thing. 
it is easy to help. It's not that much harder. I, but I think you made a good point. Even a small amount helps because I think most people think that's not enough. You know what I mean? And they well, and also, you know, when, when we do surgery in other parts of the world. It's cheaper. I, like, it's a lot less expensive. A lot yeah. cheaper. Anna and I were in Cambodia on a medical mission. And a right. surgery there, open heart surgery, might be $1,000. Might Isn't be $2,000. But We're everything's here. donated too as well. Don't forget, you yeah. know, a lot of the services are donated and the teams come in and they volunteer. So when we say 1000 that's the cost of everything how yeah. could that be because, because everything's donated for anesthesia and all kinds that's of donated. things that's donated the team comes in all donated yeah i yeah. see and wow. they don't have to deal with medical insurance like you do here in the united states that pretty yep. much makes everything so difficult mm -hmm. well this has been a fun show it was great it was like yeah. last week we just we, sort of like we threw it together. with me it was like we last week <laughs> except with me is that it no okay. we just threw it together i think this is a, probably a better idea except tony probably isn't very happy we throw it together and say you were, here you were on last week we'll you were in new york it. and we pretended like we oh, could hear you, know you but we couldn't we should have called uh, justin because not only is he barricaded in the snow the patriots literally were marching by his dorm today because of the uh, parade we should just have your son call Why in every week we have him on i know he i called know. in last week Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, I love he was, it. There he was like was 30 feet of snow and he didn't have boots. What kind of mother is she? I don't know. He would not get them. I'm like, you have to get No, he finally went out and bought some. He's one of those, you know. All right, uh, time to say out. goodbye, ladies. Bye. 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 Fun show. See you next have week. Have your son call in next week. Okay, I will. It's really cute. <laughs>